Hi, and congratulations on your 2022 Nissan Rogue S. This is a great vehicle, amazing on gas, super nice drive, very comfortable. And for an entry level model, we're gonna see it's nothing entry level about it. There's lots of features on this. Safety is standard, but you know that. That's why you bought this vehicle. We're gonna go back through and give you a good refresher on everything that you got with it. And at the end, if you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. All of my contact will be at the end. You can call, text, email, or stop into a Regan's Nissan at 60 Baker Drive in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Let's go through and see what you got. We're going to start right here at the infotainment system. You can see it's a beautiful 8-inch full-color touchscreen display, elevated slightly. It's not distracting, but it is easier to see. With this, we've got all kinds of audio options here. I've got AM, FM, satellite radio is free for the first three months. After that, if you don't want it, don't do anything. It'll just stop working. If you do want it, it's going to revert back to the preview channel and there's a toll free number on there. You can just give them a call and they'll get you all hooked up with that. USB 1 and 2, which is down below here. USB 1, as you can see, is a type C USB. This is the newer style USB port. Android users have been using this for a long time. Apple is getting on board with this for the last couple of years now. It is going to charge your phone faster and transfer data faster. So it works a whole lot better. And then we have our traditional USB port as USB 2, and that's the USB Type A. We've also got Bluetooth streaming. Now, what we don't see here because they haven't been hooked up yet is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I do apologize for the glare. There is a very sunny morning here this morning. So we're going to back out. We're going to go into our settings here because if you want to hook up your phone, you then have to go into connections. We're going to make sure that the Bluetooth is turned on. And new this year, you can hook up two phones simultaneously. So this is brand new for Nissan. We're gonna back out of this, and then all you gotta do is tap that button there, you'll get a message pop up, then go into the settings on your phone, into your Bluetooth settings, and then you're looking for My Rogue. When you tap on that, you'll have another menu pop up here with a number on it. Confirm that that number matches the pop up on your phone, press pair. If you have an Apple phone, you're gonna press allow once. If you have an Android phone, you're likely gonna to have to press it twice. Also, if you have an Android phone and a lock screen, from there, you're gonna to wanna to back out to the main settings on your phone, go down to lock screen. You're gonna go into smart lock. You're gonna go into trusted devices, add a trusted device, and then you're gonna add my rogue. This just prevents your phone from disconnecting when your phone locks up on you. We're gonna come back out of here. Daylight savings time is very quickly approaching us here on the East Coast in Canada. So we're gonna go into our clock here and then we can set clock manually. And as you can see, everything is super simple to set all right here, very easy to access. Once you're done, you can either hit the back button here or up here or the fastest way out of your settings is simply press the audio or the menu button depending on which version you like to see. Down below here, we have dual climate control. Now, typically what I recommend for this for most people is find a temperature that you like, press auto, and then you don't have to worry about it. This will determine your fan speed and where your airflow is going to go automatically. It will adjust them as need be. It's designed to help get you up to or down to that temperature as fast as possible. The closer you get to the temperature, it's going to readjust these things here to help maintain that temperature. Now, for your passenger, all they gotta do is turn their dial left or right, depending on which way they want the temperature to go. Once your passenger is out and you're on your own, all you gotta do is hit that sync button. Everything goes back to the driver's side setting. Heated seats are on the outside of the dials here, where we have high, medium, and low, and off. We also have a heated steering wheel right down here. Now, if you manually adjust your fan or where your airflow is gonna go, it will disable auto. Your rear defrost is right here, and that's also gonna activate your heated side mirrors. Now we can see just since doing this, this has dialed up a little bit. I'm gonna turn auto off and dial it down so that the fan doesn't get too loud while we're recording. Our gear shift is a bit different. This is a shift by wire, so every time you move this, it's gonna bounce back to its original position. As a result, we do have a beautiful storage area down underneath here. So for anybody who carries a handbag or a purse, that's a great spot to be able to put it depending on the size. Now, while we're in park, essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the direction of the indicator that we wanna get to. 
If you're in park and want neutral, you're going to move up or down one click and you're going to hold in place. Your foot does need to be on the brake to do this. That'll put us into neutral. For park, you simply push the P. Now for reverse, there is a thumb button on the side here. You're going to want to squeeze that in and push all the way forward. And you will see that also brings up the backup camera automatically as well. Really nice, crisp, clear backup camera with your prediction lines there to help as you're coming in on an angle. For drive, I simply want to come down. That's going to put me in drive. And for all of these, I can see it right up here on the dash as well. Now we see beside the drive, there is an M. If I push down to drive a second time, I see it's into manual shifting here because I do have paddle shifters on the wheels. To get back to regular drive again, I'm just gonna push back to drive. And we can see up here, we're back to regular drive again. Now, because I'm in drive, to get to reverse, I gotta push up to reverse or down to drive. You're going the direction of the one that you want. But if I'm in drive to get to neutral, I have to go forward one. If I'm in reverse to get to neutral, I have to come back one. And again, no matter where you're at, park, you simply push the button and you're back in park. Down below here is our electronic parking brake. To turn this on, you simply pull up on that. You see the light comes on there and the indicator is on up here. To disengage this, my foot needs to be on the brake because if it's not, what happens is I push down and it tells me, press brake pedal. When I do that and then push down, that all goes out, my parking brake is back off. Now auto hold, in order for this to work, I need to be buckled up. So I'm gonna do that right quick. We're gonna turn on auto hold. Now the light is on there, but because we're parked, we don't see anything at all here. However, the moment I go into drive, we're gonna see up top here. Now this is green all, already because my foot is on the brake. There's a round circle with an A and the word hold underneath. Now, at this point, I'm in drive and I've taken my foot off the brake. I'm not moving. My brake is held on and that's what that does. The moment I touch my gas, that turns white and I'm moving. Press the brake in for two full seconds again. And it's back green and again, I'm held in place, not going anywhere. Now, because I use the auto hold and it turned green, the moment I shift into park, it automatically engages my parking brake for me. Making it very easy to make sure that you're always using that. My drive mode selector, if you have the all wheel drive version, there's a dial right here and we can see on the top, this is auto. This is where you're gonna to default to every time. That's your normal mode. We also see it up here beside my park indicator. My first one over this way is eco mode. And as I change these, it does show on the screen up here. Eco mode will get me better gas mileage. Just be aware that pulling away from a dead stop or trying to get out and around somebody in a hurry, it's gonna feel a little sluggish compared to the other modes. If you are losing your passing lane and want to get out and around somebody in a hurry, sport mode will do this. Just don't forget to take it back out of sport mode when you're done because it is harder on gas. To the left of our auto is snow mode. So we're going to start by saying your all wheel drive system, if you have the all wheel drive version, is always on. You're gonna drive in front wheel drive about 90 to 95% of the time, but pulling away from a dead stop, you are in all wheel drive. Once you get going, it drops down to front wheel drive. Any traction conditions at all will trigger the all wheel drive system to kick in. With, and it will do so up to 140 kilometers an hour. With snow mode, it will kick in sooner, but it's gonna hold it a lot longer. Under normal conditions, once you're past those traction issues, it drops right back down to front wheel drive. If I'm out and on the go, especially during the winter and the roads are getting a bit slick, I can flip over to snow mode and when it kicks in the all wheel drive, it'll hold it in a lot longer so that I know I have a safer drive home and a much better peace of mind. The last one down is off-road mode. With off-road mode, if you're heading down an old dirt road that is maybe really loose on gravel or has a lot of mud on it, flip into off-road mode. This is gonna kick in the all-wheel drive system very, very quickly. 
and you're gonna stay almost exclusively in all-wheel drive while you're in those conditions. Once you get past them, just flip it back to your normal drive mode and you're good to go. Our center console is a butterfly style console, nice and deep, lots of room in there for storage. But the beauty of it is, if my arm is resting on one side and somebody wants something out of the other side, it will only open one side and gives people in the back access to be able to get stuff as well. Moving over to our steering wheel on the right hand side here, we've got our Bluetooth hands free. My phone is going to answer a call or hang up. My voice button is going to allow me to make a call, but the bonus to this is it will access the voice recognition on your phone if it is set up. So if you have an Apple phone with Siri, this will access Siri. If you have an Android phone with Hey Google, that will access Hey Google simply by pressing and holding for two seconds and then you're good to go. My dial here is gonna turn on my cruise, which I can see right up top here when it comes on. From there, I can set my speed, resume, cancel. If I need to increase my speed, I just tap up a couple times or tap down a couple times to reduce the speed. On the left side of my wheel, I have my volume for my radio. These two buttons here are gonna go through my presets on my radio. So as I hit them, I can see that they go through the presets there, making it really easy to change everything, but I can also see it on the home screen as well as the audio screen that we'll see in a few minutes where it's showing me what's going on with my presets right down the bottom there. Again, really nice and easy. Now the beauty of being on the home screen or the audio screen on top of having a digital speedometer on the home screen is if I press the okay dial, which is right here and I simply just got to press it in, I get a list of my audio options. And if your phone has been hooked up either through Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, that becomes an option. If you have a thumb drive full of music plugged in, that becomes an option as well. So from here, I can see I have total control of everything to do with my audio, all with the push of my thumb while I'm driving. Makes it really nice and easy. My left and right arrows right here with the okay dial. We're gonna go through these screens right here and then at the end, we'll get into the settings where we might modify one or two things. But we're gonna go over to the next screen by going to the right. And I can see another speedometer and average driving speed. But there is little up and down arrows on the right hand side of that screen. So we're gonna scroll down and we can see another screen here with some information. So we've got average fuel economy, which is running ridiculously high. And that's because we've gone 98 kilometers in three hours and 57 minutes. Our last screen down is just our fuel economy. So we're gonna go back up. Now this one says manual reset one. If I press in that dial, I get manual reset two. Both of these screens, if you press and hold the okay button, you get a menu. We're gonna say all items and yes, and that will clear everything or you could do them individually. But if I press the, the dial one more time, auto refuel takes me to a screen that every time I gas up, it will reset this whole screen here all on its own. So if you're somebody who likes to monitor from fill up to fill up what's going on, this one will do it automatically. That way you don't need to remember to do it. Next screen to the right, we have a tire pressure monitoring system. Now, once you start to drive, it will show you all four wheels individually. And on the axles on the picture of the Rogue, it'll show you what the pressure should be set to. Now, whether you're on this screen or any other screen, if you do get a low tire pressure, you will get a warning that pops up and tells you low tire pressure. It's going to tell you which of the four tires is low and what the exact pressure is. From there, when you pull into somewhere that has an air pump, so whether it's a service station, a general store, a car wash, anywhere that has an air pump, pull up to the air pump, leave your Rogue running get the hose and go to the tire it says needs air, start putting air in. As long as your Rogue is running while you do this, when it gets to the proper pressure, your horn will beep once to tell you to stop. If for some reason you kept going or went to the wrong tire, there is an upper limit that you'll hit and the horn will beep three times in a row when this happens. Should that happen, please stop putting air in your tire. However, we do ask that you start letting some air back out of that tire. Once it gets back down to the proper pressure, your horn will beep once to tell you to stop. Now again, we've got our little up and down arrows there. So we're gonna scroll down to see what that next screen is. 
and this screen will allow you to monitor when you are in front wheel drive versus all wheel drive if you have the all wheel drive version. Like I said, you will drive front wheel about 90 to 95% of the time and you'll see where the top line has 100% of the power, but when you're in all wheel drive, there will be power to that bottom line and a reduction in power to the top line. Our next screen to the right is our audio screen and again, pressing the OK dial from here gives us all of our audio sources. Now this screen here is related to our safety features. I mentioned safety was a key thing for Nissan, it's very important for them. So we're going to go through and tell you all about it because Safety Shield 360 is standard on almost everything that Nissan carries in 2022. We're going to start off by talking about the automatic emergency braking with forward collision warning. That's in the front. It's run through a radar in behind your Nissan emblem. So in the winter, make sure you keep that free of snow and ice. If you're driving down the road and the car up ahead of you is turning into a driveway or maybe turning onto a side street, they're doing about 10 kilometers an hour around that turn. You're doing about 50 kilometers an hour approaching them. As soon as that radar in the front gets within range and sees, hey, we're closing this gap really fast. It's going to beep at you inside here and flash a warning up on the screen. It's either going to be yellow or red, depending on how close you are when this happens. It's just letting you know that unless something changes, there is a risk of a collision. Once they finish rounding the turn, nothing else happens and you carry on as if it never happened. However, if partway around that turn, they fully stop or the car that's driving up ahead of you slams on the brakes inside the vehicle, it's going to beep at you and it's going to flash that warning because it knows that you're now closing this gap super fast. After it does that, the gas pedal is going to push back against your foot a little bit, but you're not even going to feel it because your foot's going to be lifting to go to the brake. If you don't get to the brake fast enough, as crazy as that sounds, the vehicle will start to apply the brakes for you to help avoid or minimize an oncoming collision. And the moment your foot is on the brake, that all shuts down because you're in total control of the vehicle. Your pedestrian detection works the exact same way, except it works even faster for just for the reason that the car ahead of you that hit the brakes still has some forward momentum while the person who walked out in front of you does not. And hopefully we will avoid giving them any. Oh, sorry. The next thing that I want to talk about is the lane departure warning. So lane departure warning is run through the camera up in behind your rear view mirror here, which is where your pedestrian detection is run through as well. Your lane departure warning is more of a highway feature. It's going to work at 60 kilometers an hour or higher. Once you're doing this, it uses that camera to read the lines on either side of you. And if it sees that you're starting to drift out of your lane, it will vibrate the haptic steering wheel. It's kind of like hitting the rumble strips on the side of the highway. Blind spot indicators are out on your mirrors. They are just little triangles out here that will light up a dull orange and stay lit up. There's one on each side. As long as part of a vehicle is in your blind spot, they will light up. Now, if it's lit up, if my driver's side is lit up and while it's lit up, I signal to go left, that indicator is gonna start flashing and it's gonna beep at me a couple times inside the Rogue. Just to let me know, have a look over my shoulder, there is something in my blind spot. You also have rear cross traffic detection for when you're backing out of a parking spot. Anything that's coming at you from within approximately two car lengths on either side, it'll beep inside your Rogue, but whichever side it's approaching from, the blind spot indicator on that side of the vehicle will be flashing to let you know, hey, hold up, there's something coming at you from that side. Finally, in the back, you have rear sonar and rear emergency braking. Now your rear sonar on my backup camera, and it's a little hard to see because of the glare, but there are green, yellow, and red hash marks here for distance markers. Once whatever is behind me gets within the green hash marks, it's gonna slowly start to beep at me. And the closer I get down here to the red ones, the faster that beeping is gonna be. Once I get down near the red hash marks, if I'm still backing up, it's gonna be almost a steady tone and right around those red hash marks, which is about a foot and a half away from whatever's behind me, it will fully apply the brakes and stop me dead in my tracks and hold the brakes for two seconds to avoid contact with whatever's back there. 
You also have high beam assist. Now I'm gonna cover our light sensors up on our dash up here, which is gonna force my headlights on. Now I can see down below here, I have what looks like a green bullet with an A. This means that my high beams are now automatic. Now the beauty of all of this is every single one of the Rogues come with LED lights since 2021 onwards. When that A is on there, which you can turn on using the little button on the end of your signal indicator, that means that your high beams are automatic. So again, it's gonna use that camera up top there and it's looking for headlights and tail lights. The moment it sees any of them, it will automatically turn your high beams off. As soon as there's nothing in front of you and you're in a dark enough area, they'll come right back on. Typically won't work residentially because it's too bright and you do need to be doing more than 40 kilometers an hour for this feature to work. That is our full safety shield 360. To go with that, we'll turn up our brightness there a little bit. You do get visuals on this screen to show you what's going on. It's been our experience that you're actually gonna be more focused on what's going on around you than you are watching the screen here. Our last screen over is gonna be our settings. And if we press the okay dial, it takes us into this. Now, the first thing I will say is don't be afraid to play with these. Right on the very bottom is a factory reset if need be. And I've only ever had to do it once or twice. Our VDC settings turns off your traction control in here. I typically recommend leaving this alone as you are in an all wheel drive vehicle with multiple drive modes. Our driver assistance, and we're gonna make sure everything is on here as I typically do before a vehicle leaves the lot. Your lane assist is your warning. We wanna make sure that's on and you can set the vibration level for your steering wheel. So we just scroll down to that one and we go in, you've got high, medium and low. We're gonna back it here. We're gonna go down to blind spot and that's just your blind spot warning. So as you see, you can turn these off and those two will stay off. Emergency assist is your automatic emergency braking and rear emergency braking. And again, you can turn them off, but with these ones, as soon as you turn off your Rogue and turn it back on, these ones by default are gonna come back on. Parking assist is just your rear sonar, and you can set it to show on the screen, turn the sonar on or off, and then you've got your distance and the volume as well. Now with your rear sonar, in the rear emergency braking. Should you decide to put a hitch on your Rogue, anytime that you have something that you're gonna to connect to the hitch or connect it to it, whether it's a small trailer or a bike rack, you're gonna to wanna to go into the emergency assist and disable the rear emergency braking so that you can actually connect to it or back up once it's connected. You may also want to do the sonar as well. Back at the main screen, we're gonna come down to vehicle settings. And in the vehicle settings, we're gonna come into locking. Now by default, Nissan vehicles will automatically unlock the doors on your vehicle when you turn them off. It's normally set for ignition off. I typically go in and set it to turn, uh, to unlock the vehicle when you shift to park. This is the more desirable method for most people. If you don't want that, you can easily revert it back. We're gonna come down and check the wipers speed dependent we want turned on that's for my intermittent wipers down here so when I'm driving along locally and I have my my speed set there that sets the delay on the wipers and when I loop out to the highway and start going faster speed dependent means it will automatically reduce that delay a little bit without having to touch anything reverse link means if my front wipers are on and my back wipers are not when I put it in reverse, despite the fact that the back wipers are off, because the front ones are on, it will still clear the back window for me so that I can see. That's my reverse link. Down here, rear door alert. I do have a separate video going all over that. That's a safety feature primarily for uh, families with small kids or possibly animals. Check out the video on that. It's a really neat safety feature that Nissan put in a couple years back. Very easy to turn on or off, but if you're gonna turn it on, I recommend horn and alert, and you'll see everything in that other video. Your maintenance for your oil and filter, we typically set it for 16. Now you're not gonna make it all the way to 16 unless you live in perfect conditions. Your oil control system, so if we go back to oil and filter, 
we'll see there's 83 kilometers into that. But if we look at the oil control system, which comes set default at 16,000 from Nissan, there's more than 83,000 kilometers ticked off on that. And the reason is this is monitoring your oil. And because we live in extreme conditions, which are deemed to be any, a lot of short trips in minus 10 or below, or a lot of short trips in plus 20 or above, and those are Celsius, then that is harder on your oil and this will tick down faster based on all of that. So what we tell people for your oil changes is once a year or when your vehicle tells you. Now the flip side of that is we do recommend maintenance every 8,000 kilometers or every six months and your maintenance schedule is fully laid out in section 10 of your owner's manual. It gives you everything that's recommended in there. We do highly recommend doing that for the longevity of your vehicle. Customized display in the main menu, we turn one of these blocks off and it's the second one down because it's a blank block. Everything else we tend to leave on. And that's it, that's the last thing that we tend to change in here. You're free to play with whatever you like, it is your vehicle. And like I said, there is a factory reset on the bottom so nothing to worry about. One of the last things I wanna cover with you here is our key fob. Now, on my key fob I have a panic button, unlock and lock. And because it is a key fob, there is a battery inside. This means that we also have push button ignition. To work your push button ignition, you put your foot on your brake and you push the button in. And it'll tell you that right up here on the screen when you get in. But as I mentioned, there is a battery in this. That battery is typically good for two to four years. And your very first indication that your battery is getting low, you will hop into your Rogue, put your foot on the brake, push your start button, and a message will pop up here that says incorrect key ID. Let the message go away and try again, it should start. Time to think about changing your battery at that point. Those batteries here on the East Coast run about $7.50 at any of your big box stores or drug stores. Very, very easy to switch. However, if you get to the point where you just haven't been able to switch your battery out, it's getting extremely low or dead, you're gonna have a hard time starting up here. Flip your key fob over because when you go to get in your vehicle and it's not unlocking for you, there is a key to get in the driver's side door and there is a keyhole on the driver's side door. Once you get in with your foot on the brake, you're going to take the Nissan emblem on your key fob, put that directly against your start button and use that to push your start button in. Even though your key fob may be dead, it will still start. To switch out your battery, all you want to do is pop that key back out. There's two little recessed areas here. Get a little flathead or something like that in there, give it a twist, this will pop open. The battery that's inside of this has a number on it. It's either gonna be a CR2032 or a CR2025. Whatever the battery number is, that's the size battery that you want to pick up. Please don't pick up dollar store batteries. They're great, they're cheap, but they tend to only last three or four months, whereas if you spend the money on a good battery, it will last another two to four years. Once you put the new battery in, clip it back in place, put your key in place, and you're good to go. Congratulations again on your 2022 Nissan Rogue. As you saw, this is a great vehicle, and although it's an entry-level model, there's nothing entry-level about it with all the features that it has. I love the drive on this. It's great on gas, very, very comfortable, and I know that you're going to love it too. If you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. All of my contact info is immediately gonna follow and you can call, text, email, or stop in to Regan's Nissan at 60 Baker Drive in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And we're gonna do everything that we can to help answer all of your questions and make sure that you're comfortable with your vehicle. I look forward to seeing you while you're in for your regular maintenance or when it's time for the next one.